In this tutorial, I'm going to give you an overview of how Ninja Forms works. There is a free version, and the free version is very powerful. And then the model is you pay for add ons or extensions that you want to add versus having the plugin be completely premium and bundled with extensions. You get a powerful free version, then you can choose or not choose to get extensions to increase the power of the plugin and serve your needs. And I'm going to show you the overview of this plugin, how it works, all the cool stuff you can do for free. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress. You can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you like WordPress, you like learning tips and tricks and hacks and having things made easy for you, then this is the place for you. Start now by clicking subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And then when you're done that, check out the hosting deal I negotiated for you for 50% off. This is with InMotion. Every deal is a discount. Some of them are over 50%. Some of them are just 50, some are under 50, but either way, every plan has a discount. And if you need new hosting for yourself or for your clients or for your dog that wants a new website, check out that hosting deal because it will save you money. And with that out of the way, let's head to the screen capture and start doing some WordPress. To get Ninja Forms up and running on your site, first we've got to go to Plugins and then Add New. And then look up Ninja Forms. And the one we're looking for is this first one up here. A million plus installs, four and a half stars out of 800 reviews. Updated two weeks ago, compatible with the current version, all that checks out looks good. But just to be safe, you should back up your files and your database before you install any plugin. I've linked a tutorial up above. Using Updraft Plus as a backup plugin is a great idea. It's in that tutorial. It's free. It's awesome. Check it out. I'm going to click on install now because I'm on a demo site and I'm not too concerned if it breaks. And if it breaks, in fact, I will fix it and that'll make a great tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it. And then I will click on activate. Now we have a request here to collect some anonymous data on the plugin to help the developers make it better. You can choose to do that or not. I'm just going to uncheck this box as well, which is do I want to be on the mailing list? You can choose yes or no for that. I'm going to uncheck that box, click on no for now. Might change that later, who knows. And what Ninja Forms does is it redirects us right to here after we choose that, that whatever answer we choose. So the plugin added a link option on the left here with a bunch of stuff under it. Now Ninja Forms, I mean there's a business model, they got to make money too. So they provide a lot of stuff for free and then they like to get paid through you buying add-ons. Other forms like Gravity Forms for example, you pay for the entire thing. You say so you pay for the form builder and you pay for the add-ons. Here you get the form builder free but then you pay for the add-ons. Contact Form 7, you get for free, you get the add-ons for free but then the quality of the plugin is not as polished as this one, which you're gonna see in just a second. If you've been on this channel for any amount of time, you've seen a bunch of Contact Form 7 tutorials because it's a popular plugin and people keep requesting tutorials for it, so I keep making them. But this is a very, very polished plugin compared to that. So if we just take this shortcode, we have a pre-built form right here, not even, I haven't even done anything. I haven't even gotten to the editor, I haven't done anything. Ninja Forms built this form for us if I add this to a page, let's see how this form looks compared to a contact form 7 form. So I'm just going to call this Ninja Form, paste that short code in here, and publish it. And I'm opening up a contact form 7 form over here at the same time. And we're going to compare the two. Both are just out of the box, no custom styling. We're going to see how they compare. So this is an out of the box Ninja Form. And this is an out of the box contact form 7. They actually look pretty similar. Your theme might have some styling specific to either of these because they're both pretty popular. So it may look different on yours, but for mine in the Divi theme, there's no real styling. Something Ninja Form has out of the box that Contact Form 7 doesn't is validation. So I clicked into these fields and when I clicked out, it said this field's required. That requires an additional add-on for Contact Form 7. So if we head back into here, let's actually create a new form by clicking on Add New. And we get the option to choose a, or create a blank form which means we start from scratch, a contact us form, which is a pre-built contact form, a quote request, an event registration. I'm going to choose a quote request form, and let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, it takes us out of the regular WordPress dashboard. There's no more menu on the right. We're still in our site. We're still in the admin area, but this is a dedicated Ninja Form editor. And all these fields that you have in this list right here, these are what the form are built from. So in the very first field, we have, if we click on the gear, we can change it, this to duplicate it, this to delete it. 
click on the gear, we see what the information is. Tell us about your project. Tell us about your project. Very good. Under display, doesn't have anything, but you can add a container and an element ID if you want. So the next one that we have is a radio list, and you can make this a required field or not. You can have the label appear above the radio, so all of these will be, there'll be a consultation option, then a radio button will appear above it. And you can also add calculated fields, which I'm sure we'll do in just a second because it's because this is a quote request form. But as we can see for the radio, we can just click on add new and we can add another item. Let's call this new one. And new one, all one word. Then click on done and that is saved. And then we have a text field, looks like, no, a select field. How urgent is this project? Check one of these boxes. Want a new one, new option? Just add a new one. Super simple. You want to rearrange them? Just click and drag on that hamburger icon. Piece of cake. When you're done, click done. Date field. What's the due date? Is it required? Does it default to the current date when someone opens it? Activate that. What's the date format? For the display, we have the same options as before, but also some help text. So. You could say below it, if they don't understand what due date is, maybe explain due date. I don't know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Maybe this is a bad example for that. But you can add help text in this box for more information and a description as well. Under the advanced, you can have a placeholder. You can set the ranges. So if you wanted uh, the range to start on 2018 and end on 2019, just enter those years in here. If you've used Contact Form 7, you can tell already the options on here are way more advanced. Here's a text area element where you just add text. You say, describe your project. It's required. You can add restrictions. You can input or you can limit the amount of input. So you can say, I don't want you to type more than 1,000 characters. So you just have 1,000. And then choose characters from the dropdown or words if you want to be 1,000 words. So you want to give people enough space to fill out their answer but you don't want to give them so much space that they can write a novel. And there's a lot of other options to go through just like the other fields. I'm not going to go through every one right now, but if you want me to do specifics on each one of these, I can, but they're pretty self-explanatory. The first name input field, pretty straightforward. Last name, the email field. We have a phone field, address field, city, state, zip, and the submit button. Now, if there are fields in here that we want to add or we don't, don't have here, we click on this little plus element on the bottom, bottom right corner, and we have all of these fields available to us. There are quite a few. These are also available. All of these in the top are available on Contact Form 7. The address is available as a text input, so it doesn't have a specific address field. This is likely just a regular input field that is labeled for an address, so it's probably nothing new. Uh, the U.S. states, that's an interesting one because it takes a lot of time to pick U.S. states. So this is a drop down for U.S. states. That's a huge time saver. You can add product fields, pricing fields, layout fields, and miscellaneous fields at the bottom, including a confirm button, a recaptcha, anti-spam, and a star rating, which is pretty awesome. And again, you can calculate on these fields too. So after we've created the form and we're happy with it, we go to emails and actions and we set some more stuff up. A success message, this is what appears after they submit the form. Click on the gear to change it. So your form has been successfully submitted, that's pretty good. The admin email, that goes to the person receiving the email, which is awesome. So it here just takes all the fields. Again, this is another one for contact form seven. You need a special add-on to add all fields just by adding one shortcode. Normally you have to add them all individually. Store submission, this means it's being stored in the database, as well as you getting an email. If you click on the plus icon, we can also have an email sent to the person that sent it. So let's just add an email. So we can call this a confirmation email, and we we'll want to change the to option to the person's email who filled out the form. So in the form fields, we have their email field which is their email that they put into the form. And then you say, thank you for requesting 
a quote or whatever is relevant to the message you want to send to these people. Then you can fill in a relevant message. Click on this icon here to add in merge codes. So you could say, if we keep the main one in here, we could say, this is what you sent. And just a confirmation of all the stuff they sent. And then from the from name could be you as the website administrator. So Bjorn for this example, and then just my email address. And now it will be sent looking like it came from me and my email address as a confirmation after they fill out the, the form, which is pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Done. And maybe, maybe you want to redirect them afterwards as well. Click on redirect. We just fill in a URL. Let's send them to Google after they're done. Now they're going to be redirected. So after they submit, all these things are going to happen. And you can adjust these, delete them, add more, whatever you want. If you do a bunch of changes and you want to undo them, because you don't remember exactly, exactly what they were, you can click on this little icon here, and it shows you a history of changes that you made. And let's see, we added... Normally, undo happens sequentially, but here you can take it out of sequence. So we added the confirmation email before the redirect. So if we can just undo that confirmation, you must just get rid of this confirmation altogether. Undo all these confirmation steps. And now we should be seeing this confirmation email option going away. Oh, now it's just email. There, gone. So we undid the steps out of sequence, which is pretty, pretty handy. Anyway, this gives you a history of everything you've done inside of this form. If we go to advanced, we see some more advanced stuff, which is great for developers who want to create some custom coded stuff. I'm not going to go over specifics here. If you want me to make a custom tutorial for it, let me know. But this is great stuff. And this is built into the free options. Uh, one thing you might have seen under actions, if click on plus again, we have available integrations here. These are the paid options that you can add in. So if you wanted to integrate MailChimp, this is a free add-on for Contact Form 7, but for Ninja Forms, it's a paid add-on. But the Ninja Form itself comes with way more functionality than Contact Form 7. So it, it depends on what your business model is and, and what would most suit your own business. But Contact Form 7 and Ninja Forms and Gravity Forms and WP Forms are all great builders. This depends on which works better for you. And what I really like is the integration with Zapier down here. Because Zapier is one of my all-time favorite tools. I haven't checked what kind of integration it has with Zapier, but I know Zapier integrates with MailChimp. So you could potentially just get the Zapier. When a form is submitted, the information is sent to Zapier. You can send that to MailChimp without buying their add-on. You can send it to Slack. I use Slack all day long. You can send it to there without buying their add-on. Trello integrates with Zapier. Who's this? Live chat? What is this one? Aweber, I'm pretty sure Aweber integrates with Zapier. Uh, so here's here's the thing. You can probably end up buying just the Zapier add-on. Let's actually, just for fun, see what kind of stuff Zapier pulls out from Ninja Forms. Look up Ninja and their app list. Here it is right here. If we scroll to the bottom, it will tell us all the stuff it can do. So this triggers on a new form submission. So whenever the form is submitted, all the data from that form will be sent to Zapier. And if we scroll up, these are popular zaps that are built using Ninja Forms. And here's actually the one we're talking about just now. Ninja Forms and MailChimp. Ninja Forms and Slack. I'll bet you anything, we've got Ninja Forms and Trello in here. Let's show six more. Ninja Forms and Gmail, Ninja Forms and Trello, Ninja Forms and Monitor, Campaign Monitor, which is another one of the, the add-ons right here. Anyway, you get the idea. Zapier is also a monthly cost, but it's hugely powerful. So again, it depends on your business model. Do you need Zapier? Yes or no? Is it cheaper for you to just get by the one add-on you need? Or is it cheaper for you to tap into Zapier's 1,000 integrations and be able to build an automated machine? Whichever works for you. I'm going to click on Publish. I'm going to show you one more thing I like about Ninja Forms before I put this onto an actual page and see what it looks like. And that is this preview button right here. Let's click on preview and see what this form looks like. 
And in fact, I don't even have to put it on a page. Contact form seven, we always have to go out, put it on a page, see how it looks. Whereas here, we're previewing it right in the theme, right on a page. And this is how it looks. Obviously, the styling could be nicer. If you want me to do a CSS tutorial for Ninja Forms, leave a comment in the description down below. I'll make that happen. But the point is, we just created a cool form with functionality that would have taken a lot longer in Contact Form 7. We did it with a visual builder, and we can integrate it really easily with a lot of different apps if we want to fork out the cash to do that. But either way, Ninja Forms is a great plugin. If you do want to check out Ninja Forms and, and buy a license for it, if you want to get the pro version, I've got a link in the description down below. It's my affiliate link. Helps me keep the lights on. There's no extra cost to you. It's just that Ninja Forms breaks off a little piece of bread and sends it over to me. So I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe. Like click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the hosting deal. That's in the description down below, possibly the card up above. And next up, click one of these videos that popped up on the right-hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.